for tuning in to This Week in Poker, your source for the latest happenings in poker news. I'm Christian Knight coming to you from the Card Player Studios in Las Vegas. The first story up on the list is the World Series of Poker main event, and the wait is finally over. This week, the new WSOP champion has been crowned, and it's 22 year old Peter Eastgate of Denmark. He took home $9.1 million and beat Phil Helmuth's record for youngest main event winner ever. After a four-month-long hiatus, the final table of nine reconvened on Tuesday, November 9th. Chip leader going in was Dennis Phillips, but unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to keep it. Phillips finished in third place. The heads-up battle was between Eastgate and Russian Ivan Demidov. At the end of the longest main event final table ever, Eastgate was the last man standing of a field that started out as 6,844. Card Player TV caught up with the reigning champion at a party inside Rio's Lucky Strike while he was celebrating his win. Here's what he had to say. All right, Peter, so uh, obviously it feels great you're the world champion right now. Uh, how much more meaningful is it for you to be the youngest champion in main event history as well as the first Danish champion? It's like uh, the sugar on the top right now, but I wasn't really thinking uh, of like breaking a record was when, I, when I was playing. Like I wasn't really focusing on the money because you just kind of just need to uh, yeah focus on your game and your opponents and yeah what poker is all about. So it seemed like you really were focusing on Ivan, obviously, at the end there, and you got him to uh, to bluff at you a couple times, and you really seemed to know what he was doing. Did you have any tell on him during that final heads-up match? Uh, well, I didn't really have any physical tells on him. Uh, yeah, obviously. In the heads-up match, it's all about yeah trying to get your opponent to make, mix, make mistakes, and his timing wasn't really very good in the heads-up match. On the other hand, he's a very competent player, and it was just a very bad day to to make the, the wrong plays at the wrong time, and uh, if we play tomorrow, he might win, so... It's, it's very good to uh, yeah to use the once in a lifetime chance to uh, to get the, uh, the bracelet in the heads up match and um, yeah I'm very 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 satisfied. Perhaps as a result of this year's new format, the final table telecast earned a 1.9 Nielsen rating, which represents almost 2.4 million viewers in the average minute. That's an increase of 52 percent among viewers from 2007. To give some perspective, the 2008 WCP main event. Final Table attracted just about as many viewers as Survivor Gabon, Heroes, and Desperate Housewives. The ratings were also higher than ESPN's average regular season NBA or MLB game from last year. There has been no announcement on whether or not the 2009 main event will see the same four-month delay, but organizers had previously said that ratings would be one of the factors in that determination. Now, on to some legal news. As the Bush administration nears its end, government agencies are being pressured by the outgoing party to push through its agenda before President-elect Barack Obama is sworn in office on January 20th. On Wednesday, rules and procedures for the 2006 UIGEA were formally published by U.S. Treasury and Federal Reserve officials. The regulations are set to go into effect on January 19th. Institutions affected by these regulations, including banks and payment processors, are expected to comply by December 2009. In addition to Peter Eastgate, there was another big winner this week, and it came at the World Poker Tour World Poker Finals at Foxwoods. A total of 412 players competed, which generated a prize pool of $3.9 million. The final table included David the Dragon Pham. He has eight top ten finishes in the World Poker Tour. This time he finished fourth. The two-time card player, Player of the Year winner, is now third in this year's race, closing in on John Pham, who is currently in first. Mike Matisau also has multiple WPT televised final table appearances going in, but no title. Unfortunately for him, he would also have to go home without a WPT bracelet. Matisau was sixth in this event. One player who did have a title going into the final table was Jonathan Little. After defeating Jonathan Jaffe heads up, he got to add another one to his resume. Little took home more than $1.1 million for first place, and here's what he had to say about it. So tell me about the final table. It was pretty long and grueling. How did it go for you? It went okay. I got a little short burst of cards throughout the entire thing. Like, I would just randomly get ace-king two or three times in a row. But most of the day, I was totally card dead, besides just a few little bursts. And I got lucky in a few spots where I picked up chips against, you know, just like kind of set up hands. And I, you know, just was on the right side of all those. Let's end with some strip poker news. The Venetian and Caesars Palace are both hosting their signature deep stack tournaments. Right now, preliminary events are running with smaller buy-ins that range from $200 to $1,000. Check out cardplayer.com's tournaments tab for a full schedule. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Christianette for Cardplayer TV.